Alrighty. David, what's hey, up, man? man? How you what's doing? Up? Good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you too. You ready for the studio tour? Oh yeah, come on in. Sweet, let's do it. Welcome to the studio, <laughs> which is also the office, awesome. also the man cave, all in one. Here, part of that we have like the 3D printing corner and a little kitchenette. <laughs> Favorite snack in the kitchenette? Favorite snack in the kitchenette. I'd say that probably Italian cookies. These ones. Absolutely love those. Do you want one? No. <laughs> All right. We'll keep one for later. Then here I have the bathroom, which is also a storage. So we're not going to go there. So you're set up to spend a lot of time here. I do, yeah. yeah. I spend quite a bit of time here. And uh, I have my day job here, and then I have all kind of all the hobbies here. Kind of ended up here in the middle of COVID, and then it became kind of all the indoor hobbies are here. So you can see here like all the 3D printed things, like that one little guy. When people come here and they want to disturb me in the middle of a call, all I do is... <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like that I'm busy and it actually turns on automatically with the camera ah. on my computer. So everything automated, of course. Everything in this space is automated. Like any light, like when you enter, the heating turns in, turns on. Any of the lights here can be turned on. Individually. Individually, together. Or any light in the studio can be turned on. My finger printer with Everything that is printed around here, you see a bunch of stuff. This is like the corner of the unplated stuff or like semi-plated stuff. This is the mad scientist workshop. This is part of the mad scientist. Okay. <laughs> then you see like, for example, the clock here is 3D printed as well. And it operates. And it's a white clock, yeah. And this is also partially 3D printed, by the way. Oh, which part? The, the on-air? The internal, yeah. It's, I mean, it's been a, in use for a lot. That's why you see it's already like kind of Lost the lid. <laughs> Happened. But uh, um, still works. So this is not, you don't spend most of your time in this room though. The only time I spend here is when I monitor what the printer is doing. And for that I have a webcam that well. Oh, you have a webcam set up to the printer? Yeah. See, that's pretty cool. What is it? It's, it's a, recording the whole process? It records exactly what, what's being printed, yeah. <laughs> and that one is cool. It's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> That's a 3D printed... We could make an entire video about the gadgets that yes. are 3D printed in this office. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> Alright, so this is where the magic happens. First, actually, I didn't notice that before, but like, did you notice how much less echoey the tomb is? A lot less echoey, actually. So, Hold on, let's test this out. Testing, 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 yep. Wow. And then you go here, especially if you close the door. Oh, it's significantly quieter and there's, there's no hum. Almost completely is, silent in here. There is a, yeah, it is quiet. Unless the neighbor here decides to put his uh, pretty awful music. That's a problem. That the is neighbors. a problem. Yeah, so that's basically where the magic happens. That's uh, kind of what my desk, which is not yet a standing sitting standing desk, but only a sitting desk, but we'll fix that. What is cool is that first, of course, a lot of 3D printed stuff. Like for example, you have all the headphone hangers over there. Some serious headphones also. Oh yeah. Gotta be able to hear. <laughs> this is the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. Awesome headphones for recording, mixing, perfect headphones. The stand here is 3D printed, even like with wood and everything, pretty cool. And then... Is that 3D printed? So that is not 3D printed. Uh, the Pac-Man itself I saw in some toy store, but it was, it had basically like very simple LEDs. And then I decided to make That's it smart. Right Double tap. <laughs> <laughs> Double tap. <laughs> okay. <coughs> and I made the Pac-Man Wi-Fi controllable as well. Here, for example, let's make it twinkle. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And you did all of that. 
and I did. I did all of that. There's actually a video on the channel of how I did it. Oh, how interesting. Maybe go check that out. Definitely. <laughs> the video is linked over here and in the description below. All right, but one of the most important things for me was that when I come, like I use the same laptop at home, on when I travel and here. So it was very important for me that it's all gonna be connected with one cable. And so when I just- And you do that, I mean, you travel a lot and you work from home sometimes. This is just for consistency so yeah. that you're not constantly, you know, relying on cloud services or anything like that. You have the same same computer everywhere you go. I have the same computer everywhere you go. Yes, so it's the uh, M1 Max, uh, 32 gigs, um, almost the, the highest spec I could get at that point. Funnily enough, uh, I replaced an i9 before that with this M1 Max and things that took 45 minutes on the i9, like the, the top spec Apple had, this one does in seven. Really? Yeah. That's a massive difference. So that's amazing. Um, but in terms of the setup, it was very important for me that everything is connected with one cable. So I have this uh, Dell, uh, I don't remember the model, but it's gonna be written here somewhere. That provides 90 watt power, pretty well calibrated screen, uh, and it's essentially the USB hub for everything else mm, in the studio. Okay. So everything else connects to the screen. Now, I know that cable management could be better, but it's a work in progress. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Well, uh, you keep adding also. So. I do. I want to get into, as a layman, Yeah. Uh, this looks like alien technology to me. What part so let's start to? breaking this. This. <laughs> All right. So this is the Kikon K2, and it's a mechanical keyboard with blue switches. Sounds very cool. So the funny story is that I love how it sounds. I love typing on the keyboard, but uh, the reason why it's in the office and not in, at home is because when I'm typing on it, it's impossible to sleep in the next two. <laughs> not even the same room, like in the next two we can't sleep. And that is why it's here. However, they also have uh, keyboards with other uh, switches. So if you want something quieter, actually, I can maybe bring that one, for example. This is the uh, Ampo, and it's another nice mechanical keyboard. Much quieter, but still a really nice. Okay. Still very nice. Oh, that feels nice compared to like a MacBook keyboard. Oh this yeah, is, they're all... There's a yeah. lot of feedback going on. They all feel better than a Mac keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> try the other one, try the kick on one. Oh, it lights up. It does. <laughs> you can actually... Ah, look up here. We can change the different light mode. We can change the colors if you want, whatever. How so awesome actually, is that when you're working at night? So I actually have, uh, from that mode, I can control all the lights here with different setups. This is the setup that you usually see on the channel with this color and that light over here. But if I need to be focused and, and work kind of like, kind of in the zone, then I switch to this mode. Mm, okay. And that's my focus mode. Focus mode? <laughs> yes. How many modes do you have? Um, six, I think, right now. So I have... This is for the channel. This is... Love time? Actually, it was, was for Yelena's channel. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah, Yelena was shooting yeah. at some point. <laughs> then, this is for my day job. Okay. Very brand consistent. Yeah. <laughs> this is for when I have a uh, guest in here then this is the focus mode. I felt like angry mode. Angry mode? We can add one. <laughs> Nothing like that. We can easily add one. And then I don't have a mode where the top lights are on. That's why I don't usually... Comparatively, also, when you're, when you're in your modes here with this big light, uh, turning that on is very harsh. And I'm assuming the camera picks that up also. Yeah. So you generally, when you're recording, it's just this and the backups. Yeah, and that one. And this one. Okay, so what are these? Because these are pretty... I've seen something like this before. What, this one? This one is just a tube light. Uh, I mean, this is directed so there won't be too much light on the wall over there. And then it basically lights. Um, so this is my key light, right? It gives the, the majority of the light. Basically the camera is usually not as it is now on the gimbal here. Uh, and light comes from here. This fills my other side. 
and that one in, in the background acting both as kind of background light and also a little bit of a dim light. So that's how I usually okay. uh, record. This one is actually really cool. This is made by my sister from Epoxy. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really cute. Yeah, let's get to some of the cool knickknacks that you have. Not knickknacks, but like, you have a lot of cool stuff around here. We went over Pac-Man, we went over the UFO. I see you have the Mandalorian. I do, yeah. That's cool. The Mandalorian was randomly won in uh, Dave & Buster. <laughs> <laughs> How many tickets? I don't know. Too many, way too many. Way yeah. too many tickets. And yeah. this is awesome. So this is part of my day job. It was one of our, uh, like one of the students in uh, the company Alan that do it for us for the seven seven year birthday. And I loved it so much that I painted and I keep it here permanently. That's an epic background. It is. And that is one one of my favorite shots that I took. Um, and you took that. I took that, yeah. So uh, I started my whole kind of photography, videography journey with at least kind of this chapter with the own photography. It's kind of a funny story. I needed a tax break. So I needed like <laughs> to do some purchase which, okay. to lower my taxes. And I was like, what can be cool to buy that I don't really need? And I bought the first Mavic. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's an interesting way to get into yep. drones. <laughs> kind of started with the with the first Mavic and started flying it literally every day and shooting with it and so on. And I found out that I really love like drone photography uh, as a hobby. And a few years later, I got myself kind of my first uh, mirrorless camera, the Canon M50. And from there, I upgraded to the R6 today, which is what I use to shoot mostly. And um, Actually, the reason why I even started the channel was because I was preparing to like a public speaking engagement and I thought it's a good opportunity to practice speech. Well, that engagement went, you know, came in, uh, and left long ago. And then we had COVID and then we had a bunch of other stuff, but the channel is still here and uh, kind of changing its uh, form and format. Uh, and um, I went deeper and deeper into photography and video. Clearly. Yeah. And do you think that starting the channel ended up being helpful for you with that public speaking engagement? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Just a chance to get it out there and... Yeah, like to, to start talking in front of a, even if it's an invisible audience, high audience, <laughs> absolutely uh, helpful and uh, definitely a good way to start. And it helps, you know, like uh, building a YouTube channel can be a very ungrateful process because like you kind of it's a lot of work and you grind and you like film and edit and you think it's the best thing you've ever done and then like nobody cares. <laughs> okay. That's so a that, bummer. Start caring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that can be very frustrating. At the same time, kind of like you have a semi-subjective measurement of how good you can kind of translate your thoughts. If that makes sense? Yeah. It's very, very helpful too. So on, on the one end where you put a lot of time into something and then people don't, it doesn't connect with people, mm -hmm. you have a few videos that have really connected with a lot of people. How awesome does that feel? Oh yeah, that feels, that feels really fun. Yeah. I mean, the, the kind of number of views or something like that does not resonate as much, but when people start leaving comments, by the way, leave comments, or start kind of, you know, coming to our Discord and talking to, talking with me or talking to each other and kind of sharing ideas, that's amazing. That's Join Discord. Really <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that must be really cool. And and you get, you know, you're building a community on Discord. Uh, another plug. You're building a community of people who are clearly interested enough in the same things as you that they wanted to discuss it. Yeah, I mean, um, clearly I have like many different interests and it's a bit of a challenge for me always to kind of narrow it down. Uh, what are the things I want to highlight or, or show on the channel? But at some point, I came to the conclusion that I will, you know, I just create the videos I care about, and then if it attacks people, awesome. If it doesn't, you know, I cannot really control the audience, but I can control what I'm excited about. So you're not just going to do one thing, yeah, and stick with that. Yeah. Yeah. What are we looking at? So here, I basically try to combine like a workspace 
with a studio recording because I don't have much space here, it's not too big. So uh, I try to kind of make it all in one. So we have here the MKE 600 by Sennheiser, basically like on a, a system. And I'm kind of trying to get everything on that one system, essentially inspired by Kelly Pike from DSLR Video Shooter. Uh, he cool. did a bunch of videos on like single stand uh, setups. So I'm going there. That microphone is connected to the complete audio one and uh, that's connected to the computer. When I shoot tutorials, I would like to shoot directly to the computer. I don't even record to the camera or to the Ninja here. Uh, however, I do connect the camera to the Ninja 5, okay? okay? Because I shoot C-Log 3 on the camera and then the Ninja 5 basically filters the uh, C-Log and the output here goes into a uh, Camlink 4K that goes into the computer. And then I record all of that on OBS. Um, I have a stream deck here to which I can control which camera exactly is uh, currently active. And uh, uh, I can turn on OBS type from here and then change between the camera, camera plus screen, just the screen, and so on. Record full control from here uh, uh, into all of that. Now, if I'm recording something that is not a tutorial, not like kind of, I don't need the screen, I don't need anything like that. I record directly to the Ninja 5 and I connect the microphone to the Tascam. Record on the Tascam itself and the line out goes into the Ninja. So I have here kind of the final file, but then I have here a higher quality audio that I can then sync in post. Mm. And then all of that goes into the Ninja Resolve where I edit. Pretty simple, but I mean, the whole setup here, like the idea is, since I, I don't have that much time, to optimize the whole process as much as possible. So you can just, you got your setup, you click yeah. a button, you're ready so to go. So I finish my work, I switch to YouTube mode. So it's two taps on the mode here, the colors, the light changes, the camera here, one tap on the stream deck, boom, I'm recording, everything's ready. And then uh, on top of that, all of that is connected. The audio interface is connected both uh, to the Mac speakers and the Bell Dynamic headphones. So I can control from here if I'm mixing to the speakers or to the headphones. Basically everything is ready to go at any point. In fact, all of that lights and all of that is controlled by Home Assistant, which is Raspberry Pi down the corner. I covered on the channel the whole setup, how that I made all the automations here, and also how I reverse engineered the protocol of this light so I can control it from the Raspberry Pi as well and not deal with its original controller. That didn't happen with this one yet. And that one is coming because it's uh, based on RF, not on uh, Bluetooth. Ah, okay, so it's... And for that, we have a flipper here that we can use to reverse okay. engineer that as well. I don't even know what it is really, but... <laughs> He showed me this today. Subscribe for this video because it's a dolphin <laughs> that can hack anything you want it to in the world, it seems. And so he's going to hack into this. Is hack the right word for that? Uh, it's, it, it can be. <laughs> it can be. It can be. But if you look I mean, now, and you probably can't see this on the camera, but the dolphin's eating popcorn watching TV. <laughs> so not only is it effective, but it's adorable. It is adorable. <laughs> it is adorable. Um, is hacking the right word? It's a good question. I mean, the channel is called Hacking Modern Life and I got quite a few comments saying like, oh, this is not hacking. But it's called hacking because those are essentially life hacks, right? There's plenty of channels and content out there of life hacks of how to cut a tomato into 15 pieces like with one knife or whatever. I've seen that video, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of stuff like that. But we live in a digital world, in a modern world that has a lot of like software gadgets, uh, you know, tools, protocols. And essentially what the channel is about is life hacks for that digital life. That's kind of like, that's where the name is from and that's what the meaning is behind the name of the channel. And so you're streamlining your life through modern life hacks. Exactly. Optimizing life to digital and modern life hacks. Nice. Exactly. Uh, I have another question about Shoot. sound. Yes. as we're on on this topic here with the microphones 
Um, the audio in your videos is very crisp. As we said, when we walked in here, noticeably different mm -hmm. than just outside. What have you set up right, to so, make that happen? Um, honestly, it's not done yet. And still like, I'm not super happy with the um, kind of the level below. It could be better, but it's a start. Here <laughs> we have acoustic panels or like acoustic sponges, essentially, uh, the, on the ceiling. And then I have a few reflectors on the walls here. Reflectors on the walls, well. <laughs> and uh, it's my first day. As a <laughs> it's her first day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> the first attempt to be to, as an operator. If, if the whole video is off centered, it's her first day. Yeah. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Uh, the idea is like to, to pack the room with stuff as well, because all the stuff eats some of the reflections. Ah, okay. I do want to um, like basically take some of my photos, including this one, and kind of paint them on canvas and put some uh, glass paper inside and make a oh, that's a hook, um, acoustic panel. That's a smart way to do it while keeping a nice aesthetic yeah. in the room. I mean, it's not a big space and, you know, it's not a forever space. So it needs to be kind of easy to adjust and so on. So this carpet was supposed to dampen a little bit of the sound, but it does absolutely nothing except getting dirty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing that I'm still missing here is kind of an unboxing corner. And I kind of started working on that here. Seems like a work in progress over it here. It is. And the idea is that I have that thing here. Okay. And oh, it's a GoPro arm thing. Exactly. So I take that, I take a GoPro, take that, and then I just attach it here, put a GoPro here, and I have like a top-down shot. And how would you light that? I would light that um, with, I would take the Godot, Godox, whatever the name is. Absolutely love this set of lights, and of course it's dead for the shot. <laughs> Always charge your batteries. Yeah. <laughs> so these are cool. Yeah, get awfully bright too. You can change the color of them. So yeah, I take the, two of those. I put them here. Whatever, probably not in this color, but... And then I take the product. And if it's two, and the light comes from here, maybe not like a, a, such weird yellow. And you got the light. Perfect setup. And then I can add that one here as well. And it's very bright. And I can do unboxing that way. I, if I'm shooting something a bit kind of more important, then I just move all of that here and that here, and I flip that. And there you go. I take a tripod, put it on here, and basically I have a top-down shot with a green screen. And then I can adjust any background I want in post. And then I have the lights, I have the green screen. Works perfectly. Nothing else you need. Yep, except for not spending so much time to set it up. That's the only thing I need. Right. <laughs> While we're over here, walk me through this one, and then this looks like a 3D printer no more. Yeah. So I'll start with the bottom. Okay. Okay. Are you making modifications to this? What's the... So that actually, that was my previous 3D printer. And that 3D printer, uh, I, it was awesome. But at some point it kind of died. I spent a lot of time modifying it and kind of changing it and like it went basically like there's hardly anything left from the original 3d printer as i bought it you see a bunch of pieces are printed and a bunch of additions and things like that the thing is that like maybe 70 percent of the modifications i've done with that 3d printer the other one already came with ah okay well i still like that one i didn't see the point in kind of fixing it again when i could just buy for a little bit more a new off the shelf one a 3D printer has a lot of useful parts, like the uh, the motors, the like V rails, like all this kind of stuff. And the plan is uh, to break it apart into like pieces and do a few pretty cool projects from it. One of the ideas is to make a slider with the engines for a camera uh, and use the controller for some things. And those, I mean, so this is going to be it's recycled. still got some life to it. It's gonna be um, upscaled, okay. upcycled to the new to a new world. So does that. This is basically my workbench plus charging wall. 
Here you have like all the stuff I take with me portable is kind of ready to go. No. Less so now, but you have like all the cables, all kind of things. Uh, now it's spread around the studio, so don't count on it. But usually it's ready to go, I just pick it up from here and take it where I need to travel. Convenient. Um, I have my prompter here, I have like batteries, I have a eight port charger that all the other stuff, uh, including the gimbal that's currently in use and a bunch of other stuff is connected to. And yeah, that's awesome. You have the cables already routed here on the, on the pegboard. And then like whenever I have something I need, I just 3D print the pegs and use them here. So for the batteries, I have batteries. that. All of that is already um, ready. And how often do you find yourself using things like that? Tools? A couple days, a couple times a day. A couple times a day? Yeah. Really? Yeah. On Like, what? I mean, generally things from here, I usually, like reach out here a couple times a day. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's uh, can be like tripods, like this. It can be batteries. If I'm recording, it can be prompter. Some of the cables. If I need a USB cable, if I need a HDMI cable, if I need to clean my glasses, I, everything is here. <laughs> everything is here. Everything originates from this wall. Yeah. If I'm recording on the, on the camera and I need longer recording, you have a dumb battery here. I have like all kind of audio cables. I have a vacuum cleaner. I have electric screwdriver here. This is Everything I need is why? here. Hold on a second. I thought that was a portable charger. No. <laughs> that is cool. And the most important thing I have in here, by far the most important thing, that is my thinking stick. So when I'm thinking about something and I need to focus and I need to kind of like get my energy somewhere, that becomes the tool. So I, on the channel, do people know David? Do people because know even David? as we're as we're talking about here, you got lanyards for days. What's something about David that people on the channel should know, other than what they already know about, you know, AI home automation? Stuff like that. Like, what? What do you think this room encapsulates more than just the technology about David the person? I think the one, like, if not for COVID, I probably wouldn't have had that room and that space uh, because essentially in 2016 I left my home country and became kind of a digital nomad. Me and my partner, we were coming like traveling quite a bit, and then we. Came here to Belgrade to have some base and uh, took a small apartment, like a suitcase and kept on traveling and then COVID hit. And we found ourselves, the two of us in a 40 square meter apartment, trying to both work from home. A friend of mine had this place that he was renting out as an Airbnb, which wasn't useful after doing COVID. And then uh, I said, maybe I'll make it in my office. And once I had an office, well, from having the laptop you see how much stuff I have. Yeah, okay, so you've just been collecting everything. I've been collecting. I'm definitely a hoarder. Yeah. I am. I mean, we haven't shown the inside of your closet yet, but there's... We can go to... You have stuff. We can go to the closet. All right, so moving over to the closet, you mentioned you're a hoarder. You okay. definitely have some things. I have some things. Yeah. So let's start... Basically, like, I try to organize the closet based on subjects. And it goes something like this. So this is uh, like home automation and current projects, usually. Right? So things that are currently under review or part of projects I'm working on, mostly kind of for the channel. This is all camera stuff, mostly. So you see the microphones, you have the GoPros, the 360 cameras, um, hard drives, uh, adapters, all kind of stuff like that. And for some reason, an alcohol meter that connects like via Bluetooth. Ah, useful. Very useful. In a bunch of these bags, you have a bunch of cables, another light. Uh, by the way, somebody asked me recently, should you get the Nonlight 6C or the Godox? You get the Godox. Okay. You heard it here <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, then here is all the electronic stuff. So you have like the Raspberry Pis, the Arduinos, all that kind of stuff in here. Uh, the mandatory box of cables. Oh, do you think you have enough? I don't know, I can add a few. 
Uh, that's, that one was actually a video, like I had a mouse jiggler, a few others. And here I have like, last attack in here. All of, yeah, a lot of like, ESPs, LEDs, all that kind of stuff. Next, it's 3D printing. Everything like, I have here a bunch of colors, filaments, all that kind of stuff. And then on the bottom, it's kind of regular tools, right? So hammers, screwdrivers, whatever. Whatever. As in any uh, self respecting studio, we have the boxes. Explain to me this. What I'm referring to is this specifically. So I, actually that's very, very simple, right? I mean, I mentioned that a few times uh, that a few things here in the studio designed to keep focus. And uh, have you heard of the Pomodoro technique? Yes, I actually started using it after watching Elena's channel. So this is my <laughs> Pomodoro uh, oh, timer. Oh, cool. And I can just rotate it, put it where I need. And it... It's very analog of you. Exactly. Okay. And that's why it works. Because it's not dependent on the phone. Mm. And it has a very satisfying ticking. And then these ones are for the um, Insta360 Link webcam that I actually have a review on the channel. And uh, they, if I need to show something with somebody and draw on the whiteboard, with a hand gesture I can direct the webcam here, this one. Ah, oh, that's cool. And it shows exactly what the uh, board shows. That is really cool. Awesome. David, thanks so much, brother, for this tour. It was a pleasure great, having you. Great to learn all this stuff. Maybe I can come back one day. You're more than welcome. Right. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>